what but driving driving a race car i mean you have a giant engine you're strapped into a seat you're hurling down the road at extreme speeds right next to other cars doing the same thing just the intensity and the, just the everything being on nine at all times like that is a wild way to make a living sir yeah thanks i, I mean i um it when i was a little uh when i was little thinking about you know what the hell am i going to grow up and be uh, I was my father was really successful in the sport, so I would go to the races and I would watch him race and see him win and watch him go through victory lane and and, and celebrate and all those things. And I thought, man, this is what I got to do. I got to do this. This is this looks fun. This looks exciting. People are you know people are in awe of the drivers, the race, my father, the the, the personalities, and. I just wanted to do it real badly, but I knew that the odds of making it are tough. So there's only 40 guys in the field every weekend. So there's 40 guys in this in the whole country that are going to get the shot to do it, you know. And me, the odds of me, even with my dad being as successful as he was, I'd have a lot of doors open to me. But the odds of me actually getting there and being able to stay, have the staying power and the success and talent, I just knew were tough. So I didn't know if I'd, I'd ever get that chance. Um, but it is, I don't, you know, I remember the first time I went to a two and a half mile track. It's Talladega, and you hold it wide open. I was uh, working at my dad's dealership, changing oil. He owned this uh, Chevy store in uh, Newton, North Carolina, and uh, the phone rang, and he said, "My dad, my dad was on the other end, and he was in Talladega for a test, and he said, uh, get your helmet and your suit and meet me at the racetrack. The next day you're going to fly in the King Air to the to the track. Don't no, don't ask questions. Just do it. And so I got there, and I, I knew I was going to Talladega, and I thought, man, I must be driving. This this is going to be crazy. I'm going to go around this two-and-a-half-mile two track full speed at 190 miles an hour. I'd never done – I never went faster than 90 or 95 on a racetrack before. never drove anything bigger than a half-mile. And uh, I pulled out, he's, you know, I got there, he's like, you're going to test this car, get in, get ready. He puts me in there, and he's like, you got to hold it wide open. If you don't hold it wide open, the motor's not going to work. It, it'll hurt the motor. you got to hold it. The way they tune the motor to run wide open, it has to run it. It has to run at full throttle. If you try to go around there at half throttle to burn the pistons, it'll run too lean. Wow. All those things. So he he was saying that, and I thought to myself, is he just telling me that just to make sure I hold it wide open because he thought I would I would I would be a pussy and not do it, <laughs> and so <laughs> I was like, man, I, I I'm a little nervous uh, to hold it wide open, but I I pulled out on the track and I mashed the gas full throttle, and I'm going down the back straightaway, and I was like, I'm looking down the back straightaway into the next corner, this long corner, and I'm like, how's it gonna stick? You know, how's the car gonna how's the car not going to fly out of the racetrack? Like it, I'm going so fast. I don't, it doesn't feel like it's going to stay in the track. And, uh, and I kept running, kept running that through my head about my dad saying, I got to hold it wide open. I'm like, well, dad said it'll, it'll, it'll go wide open around here. So I don't think he would, you know, I believe everything he says. And you go in the corner and you turn, uh, into the corner and there is, more grip than you can imagine like the it, there's, there's so much grip the tr the car is stuck to the track with such grip that you've never felt this before in your life this this grip like you can't slide across that track the tr the tires in the car a hold of the track so tough and tight that nothing's going to make it it just goes around there like it's it's the craziest thing and so now today when i tell people uh, when I got, I, we got this two seater car and we take people for rides and they get in there and I'm, I'm like, man, what am I going to do? What are you going to do to explain to somebody what this is going to feel like? Well, I'm going to tell you things to pay attention to, pay attention to the grip. You're not going to believe how much grip this car has. Like it's, you're, you're just not going to believe that it'll stick to the track the way it does. So pay attention to that and pay attention to how bumpy and violent it is. You know, you drive a Cadillac or, or any car down the street. Well, it's, you know, six, eight inches off the ground, these big old inflated tires and big giant sidewalls, and it's going to feel nice, you know, when it hits little bumps. Our cars are rigid and suck to the ground and don't have much travel in the suspension, and, you know, it's just, it's it's built to hand, to go fast, not to feel good, you know, and it's going to, it's rough as hell and shakes, shakes the hell out of you. And um, that's what I remember about that, and 
And, and as soon as I got over that initial fear, I think that was the only time I ever had any real fear of driving a car. As soon as I was like, well, all right, what, you know, anything, nothing else is going to be as scary as that was, right? Driving a car. And I mean, flipping. And when I flipped for the first time and our, you know, the car's tumbling and flying, parts flying off the air, my, I, I thought to myself that I wasn't scared or I never was scared of flipping. My thought was I just did something a lot of people are never going to experience. You know, I did something that uh, that only a few people know what that's like. And, and I feel safe. I've always felt incredibly safe inside the car, you know, with, especially with the, I mean, in the last 20 years, this, the safety stuff has really been focused on and improved and better and better and better. But I look at the interior of our cars today versus 20 years ago, and it's, I'm, I can't believe it's some of the stuff that we used to climb into. But So you felt calm while it was yeah. flipping? Oh, yeah. I wow. always, well, I've seen cars flip, right? I've seen it for years, right? And so I know it's possible. So I get in there, and I got turned around at a race uh, in 1998. I was racing at Daytona, and uh, I got turned around, and the car, so I'm flipping for the first time in my life. And this car's like over 3,000 uh, 3, pounds, so it's, it's, but it flies up in the air like it's paper, man. It's the craziest thing in the world. It's so weightless, you know? And what it felt like to me, because so the car rolled on its side and uh, came down kind of on its side, it felt like somebody rolled a prop wall of grass up against the car. You know what I'm saying? Right. When I was on my side and I could see the ground, I felt like I was right side up because as you're flipping, the, the force pushes you down in the seat. So you feel eternally, etern- you feel uh, gravity all the time, like you're... You know, as the car's flipping, you're you're pushed into the seat, so you feel gra- you feel weight of yourself in the seat. That never changes. You never kind of come up out of the seat right. like that, you know. And so it's like somebody rolled a prop wall of grass up against the side of the car, and then against the roof, and then against that side, and then this. You know, it kept doing that, and I'm like, it's just the weirdest feeling. And you feel completely safe. You know, wow. you feel like, you know, nothing's gonna harm me. But this, but and you know, this you just one of the things they always talk about is like get your hands uh, onto something because the spinning makes your arms just go like this. And if you watch a lot of old wrecks from the sixties and seventies, you'll see the guys' arms come flying out the window and they're just kind of flopping around. They can't pull. You know, it's spinning so fast you can't pull it in, and uh, your arms will go like that. So as soon as you know you're going upside down, you grab the bottom of the steering wheel and just kind of you know watch. But uh, I flipped my pickup truck one time on Christmas Day, and I wasn't holding on the steering wheel, and my arm went out the window. You know, for like a split second, it banged around in the in the in the window sill, and I was like, "Man, you know, I got it back in and grabbed a hold of the steering wheel with both my hands." And so ever since then, I've like, you know, now I know. Like any time I'm in a crash, you got to have your hands a hold of something because. That's the one thing that you can't control. You're you're strapped in with your seatbelt and everything, but your arms are, you know, can go anywhere. And in that moment when the car is rolling or barrel rolling or flipping, you it's so fast, like you can't. Your arms just go this way. Yeah. <laughs> it's the craziest thing in the world. That's the only fear, I guess, is that your arm could get outside the window and get crushed or something. Because guys have had that happen. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. How'd you flip when you were on Christmas? On Christmas Day, my sister. Uh, she knows this. So she just won't be news to her. But um, uh, it, it's probably not fun for her to hear every time I tell it. But we, I had a pickup truck with the tape deck in it, and I had she got me that Walkman CD with the adapter for the tape tape deck that you stick into you, you know, your cassette adapter. And she bought me the Walkman cassette adapter, and I'm in my I'm in I'm in my truck. I got an extended cab S10. And I'm driving from my house to my my mamaw's house, where family reunion is. My dad's there. Everybody's there. Whole family's there. I'm a little late. Um, and I'm driving down the road, and I got to messing with that Walkman, and I drove off into the ditch, and I hit a driveway culvert, a pipe, drainage pipe in a driveway, and went like seven flips and destroy this truck and in the middle of the flipping i remember that happening and everything all my change jacket anything that was loose in the car ended up down in the one corner like floorboard everything sort of collects into that one corner as it's spinning and uh it crushed a 
windshield down. The mirror was down into the radio. You know, it was it crushed the roof down real bad. I was wow. really lucky. I had my hands on top of the steering wheel, and the windshield kept slapping my knuckles and knocked all my busted all my knuckles real bad. And so then I, I let go, and my hands went this way. And then I finally got them back in and grabbed the bottom of the steering wheel. It broke. It the tires were flip, you know, broken and busted off the the truck. And this, I got out of the truck, and I was fine. Didn't have any injuries other than just the knuckles kind of being scraped up. This this newly married couple, they just or either got engaged or just got married, were driving the other way and saw the whole thing, and they stopped, and uh, they were like, "You all right?" I'm like, "Yeah." And, uh, of course, there's this line of cars behind me stopped on the road. And this one lady pulls up, and I was like, I need to borrow your cell phone to call my dad. She's like, you're in shock. You need to sit down. I was like, no, I'm not in shock. I just need to borrow, my cell, borrow your cell phone. So, she, so I walked to the next car, <laughs> and I got a <laughs> cell phone from this person. I called my dad, and I was like, Dad, I was like, man, I flipped my truck. I had paid, I had got, I'd financed this thing for five years. I was paying $100 a month. It's perfect. I was working at dealership changing oil, probably making $130 a week. And ha- I mean, just got this truck for probably two, three months and um, used truck, but it was, it was good. It's junk. Uh, I called dad and I'm like, man, he's going to be mad. Can't be too mad because I'm paying for the truck, but he's going to be <laughs> mad at me because I'm screwing up family reunion and, and Christmas. He comes to get me. Uh, I'd flipped this truck real close to our, where our farm was. So he ran over to the farm and got this flatbed truck, and uh, he pulls out there with the flatbed truck. And he pulls up, and as soon as he pulls up, the state trooper pulls up. And the state trooper guy and dad talked for a minute, and the, guy, the state trooper's like, you know, one single car accident, you okay? Yeah, everybody's okay. Dad, you, Dad, are you going to put this on the flatbed, take it home? Yeah, okay, okay. I'm, you know, I ain't going to. I ain't going to investigate or anything. Everything's cool. Y'all just go about your business. So he left. So he did us a solid there and uh, didn't give me any kind of traffic ticket. And so me and Dad put the truck on the flatbed, and we're driving back, and he started laughing. And I was like, man, I expected you to be really mad because he was a uh, fiery kind of dad, you know, and and, uh, pull the belt out and go to town. You know, he was a rough, strict, tough, tough dude. And so I thought I was going to get – um a good cussing at least but he started laughing and i said man what's so funny and he goes uh, i was 18 when this happened he goes when i was 18 years old i flipped my car he's like i can't get mad he's like it's just <laughs> i'm just glad you're not hurt i'm like well, that's nice so we drove back i took a couple pictures of it and uh got me got insurance for it got like 11 12 grand for the insurance to be able to buy another truck <laughs> so it all worked out yeah 